I believe that if you can reach somebody when they're young and establish good habits and good thought patterns and good choices, it's going to have a profound effect throughout their lives. Um, nobody ever showed me this. Nobody ever explained to me the time because nobody ever, not many people knew it growing up. You know, you're all brainwashed by the media. You know, you watch television and every other ad is fast food or processed food ad interspersed with medication ads. Yeah. Okay. That's television. That's TV. I mean, and that's what you're getting brainwashed in thinking and eating. And I was fortunate enough when I was a child to realize that I had reactions to man-made medicine. So I've always sought alternative solutions for my problems, be it allergies or any ailments that I have. Because I'm the little guy on the back that says, may cause? That's me. I mean, I was inadvertently given an Oxycontin when I had surgery. And I had like the most terrifying, panicking reaction. I thought I was having a massive heart attack. My left arm went numb. I mean, I, my heart was going a thousand miles an hour. I couldn't breathe. I was having like a severe panic attack, which I thought was a heart attack. And I went to, I called my doctor. Said, what did you guys give me when I was in there? And he's like, we gave me oxycodone. I'm like, man, what are you doing? I'm like, don't ever give me stuff. Like that. But it's a journey. You know, whatever ails you, give it time. Your body is designed to heal itself if it's given the proper fuel. I look at food now as fuel, whereas before I looked at it as pleasure. Being a chef, that was my that was my life. Make food that people love and eat it to, to please yourself. Now I look at food as fuel. What does my body require to, to work at peak and optimum performance day in and day out? What's going to give me long term? I sleep better. I've been I'm most peaceful, restful sleep since I've had this lifestyle. Like I said, none of the things that helped me before bother me. No more acid reflux, no more sleep apnea, no more joint pain. I mean, whatever you, you have wrong with you, whatever reason that motivates you to come here, just be disciplined, be dedicated. You're going to slip. I still do occasionally. I'm not perfect, nobody is. And what do you slip with One of my favorite foods in the entire universe is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I love pizza too. Like, oh. My goal was to create a vegan yeah, you pizza. Get, you get a pizza here. Exactly. Yeah, pizza here is great. But I mean, my goal was to create a gluten free but, uh, vegan pizza shell that is very similar to standard pizza. There you go. That's one of my goals. So then I could go back to eating my favorite food. Okay. But I mean, you know, occasionally I'll eat rice, you know, something warm, like I'll make a nice vegetable broth, and when we were in that real bitter cold snap, I needed something warm. So I made myself a really nice, healthy, vegan vegetable stock, and drank it like a tea, just to take the chill out of my body. Does your body react to it? Does it load? Nah, I mean, the, the warmth that actually did and because it wasn't, like, I didn't boil the hell out of it and cook it forever. I mean, technically, the thought is anything above 115 degrees Fahrenheit becomes uh, the nutritional content and it drops dramatically. Okay, that's why when you're dehydrating things, it's like at 105 most of the time for prolonged periods of time. But my diet right now consists mainly of green smoothies um, because I'm working and I'm on my feet for a large portion of the day. I probably drink uh, a little more than half a gallon of green smoothies a day. Um, I've upped the ingredients so that I get my caloric intake so that I don't binge eat, it fills me. I put more bananas in mine and more dates. Um, I follow the standard recipe at Arnold Beers and I just crank that up accordingly. Um, I eat big salads. Everything I eat is organic. Dead. What's the body going to do with dead material? That's the cause of every disease. I don't care if it's breast cancer, I don't care if it's headaches, I don't care if it's depression, I don't care if it's anger. But what I see, you change the way you eat, the body begins to make its own changes. We have people here with depression. Go away, a lady. My friend breast cancer. Bed. She had medication for 16 years, one for depression. By the third week, she gave up her medication. I see it over and over and over. People with anger issues change completely because they're putting love inside their system. You're not putting dead waste. When you're putting a dead animal inside your body, the body has to react. Now, all dead animals have something called uric acid. Uric acid is actually urine. Urine 
the body can't process it, the giant puts it in your hands. Actually, it releases calcium. Fed actually talked about it. Uh, the uric acid, the body cannot process, it releases uh, calcium in the hip area, that becomes calcium uric crystals, can't get down your heart, so it goes to your hands. What that's called? That's right, it goes to your feet, down. It goes to your low back, low back. It goes to your eyes, cataract. It goes to your waist, back. <laughs> I realize it's Anyway, that's the cause of all disease. It's a new reading. The body's total. Um, Continuous goal. The body's goal is purification, re establishing homeostasis, and repair. Every minute that you're alive, the body's trying to repair itself. It'll do whatever it takes. Which means someone comes to your breast cancer. We did a, we did a, a 30 day program with 30 different women. Two, two women had two women, one had a double mastectomy, and the other lady had a lumpectomy well, the year before, and she became my co-host when she was in pain, when she, she was in pain for over a year when she came to me. We changed her diet, and about two months later, all the pain went away. And she was my co-host for a month, and I was all everywhere in the third room. You'll we'll never have to worry about breast cancer again as long as you stay in your mouth and die. As simple as that. They did a film called, called um, Healing cancer, which I showed to the lady with um, down to have breast cancer. Basically, it said a sugar pill is much more effective than chemotherapy and radiation combined, medically proven. And today's society, when you're given when you're diagnosed with breast cancer, the first thing they recommend is chemotherapy. They do not recommend sugar pills. There's no money. You see what I'm saying? This is this is something that has to be out there. Was the word is not out. There. It's not out there. No one's going to, a doctor's not going to take the, take the sugar pill. He's not going to tell that to you. He's not going to say, take tamoxifen. You go to this book right here, page 67. Guess who owns the tamoxifen company? The Imperial Drug Company. Guess who sponsors all the breast cancer awareness information? The Imperial Drug Company. They are not allowed to say um, raw food or, or change your diet is a factor in, in, happening, in, in getting breast cancer. They're not allowed to say it. Otherwise, they get fired. So it's all like a not conspiracy, but they're not making any money. Right. Where I'm pushing, they came to me for a month. Guess how much I charge? Ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. I charge three dollars a day, and I save at least a hundred thousand. At least a minimum, more than that, I save a lot. Okay. First stage, innovation. I gave a class last night, and Brian's going to face at the end of this month, that the whole key is try no, no energy on digestion, which means ideally, in an ideal world, the best time to eat your, what I recommend is fruit in the morning, lunch is your big meal, whatever you want, then it back to vegetable food. That's what I would recommend. Which means if you have a big meal at night, until you have uh, you know, rice and beans, or nuts, or avocados, or, or your meat dinner, that takes 100 hours for the body to process. Well, meat takes 100 hours, maybe grains maybe 40, 50 hours, and that's maybe 10 hours. Which means when your body needs the healing time, is using its energy for digestion. The less energy on digestion, the more energy your body has to do its job. I don't care what disease it is. In my opinion, everything's based on that disease. Great job to take care of my daughter, who's in the program with me, but she couldn't come today. And uh, she had. She was diet. When we moved to the U.S., she was 10 years old. Um, that was eight years ago. She's 17. She's going to be 18. And um, it, it, it culturally, it's very interesting that she was immediately diagnosed with ADD, which she had been diagnosed before, but never medicated. Because culturally, where I come from, therapy and you know alternative ways of dealing with being distracted is what you do with children. You don't medicate them. She comes to the U.S., gets medicated at 10 years old. Um, at 13, the medication is not working, they increase the, the dose. At 15, they increase the dose again. At 16, she's extremely angry. So they give her a medication for anger on top of the other one. So she's taking some medications. The anger medication, so I, I think it was, it was an antidepressant. Everything in the, in the insert, every side effect she had. So one of the side effects is uh, depression and being suicidal, an antidepressant. Her depressed, 
we thought we were lost. You know, we had a bad child. I have four, so this one, it's the weak one. She's sick, she's ADD, she's never gonna make it, she's depressed, and now she doesn't wanna live anymore. And I just, that was a year ago, I decided, what if I do a radical change, leave my job, and dedicate myself to her? And I, saw, I thought I would have to dedicate a year, you know, or two. Um, basically, four weeks later, she decided to, she started feeling better. She left her medication without saying anything, you know, being 17. And she's completely healed just with diet. She's not taking any medication. She's happy, she smiles. She uh, is going to the college of her choosing. And I am now going back to my job. While I was learning about nutrition, um, with healing myself, I decided to, to formalize my location. I, I had business, right? So I went into nutrition. And I became a health and nutrition coach. And I thought I would do that later in my retirement, but uh, my daughter's ailments saved my life. I was in a high-powered, extremely stressful job that was not serving me, definitely was not serving her or my family. And uh, I left all of that, and I'm starting my new life as a <laughs> and I'm doing health and nutrition coach. And what coaching, one thing that I learned through this process is that many times food is not the issue. This is something that it took me a few years to really understand. Uh, when big people come and they want to change the way they eat, if they do not take care of what I call their primary food, which is relationships, your career, your family, yourself, your love to yourself, Sometimes, you know, they do do their lifestyle and they change, but until they get through those parts, they can't see full recovery from wherever they were.